Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. On Instagram earlier in the week, I asked you guys for some questions because I was going to be doing a Q&A. So today, I'm going to be doing 10 questions on 10 meter. So the first question is from Space Heater Who, who says, how are you feeling about this year's diving season so far? Now, I'm super excited about this year's diving season. I mean, it's only just started. We had the national championships where myself and Matty Lee, my new synchro partner, did our first ever competition together, which was really exciting, really fun. And it's, you know, exciting to see where that's gonna go as a partnership. So here are some of our dives in the national championships. And here's the man himself. He's still training and I'm up here on the 10 meter, but I'll get out of his way in a minute, don't you worry. Oh yeah, so we've got the World Series coming up. So we're going to Japan, China, Canada, Russia, and then the final World Series is in London, 17th to 19th of March, which you still can get tickets for to come and watch. That'd be awesome if you can. It's really exciting to be able to compete against the best in the world really often. And I'm excited to see where we stand up against them because that's really what it's gonna matter going into the World Championships this year, which is the first chance we're gonna to get to qualify for the Olympic Games. So the next question is from KC654 who says, two qualities that diving or sports has helped you develop the most. Now I have sports to thank for so much because I've been doing it from such a young age. I was seven when I started diving. I'm coming up to my, nut well, about to finish my 19th year in the sport because I started in September 2001. So for me, it's taught me so many different things. It's taught me, well, I, be, I have to narrow it down to two. There's so many more. But I've, I've, I would say I would thank sport for me doing well at school because the one thing it taught me was discipline and making sure that I was diligent about everything that I did and the attention to detail and thinking about every single thing and trying to get the best out of every single moment, which kind of leads me on to time management. Because in sport, you have to manage your time well in order to recover, to rest, and to be the best that you can be every day. And you have to make sure you're making all the meals that you need to make, all those kinds of things. So for me, I would say discipline and time management are the two big things that I've learned from being a sports person. Next question is from D. Kirkpatrick saying, favorite cheat meal and do you drink coffee? Yes, I drink coffee. I love coffee. Coffee is one of my favorite things. It's part of my morning routine. Um, I try not to drink too much of it, but I probably say I have two or three a day. Um, yeah, I just love everything about it. I love the caffeine and I love the buzz that you get. And I love like the social element of coffee. Like, let's go for a coffee, let's do that. So yeah, well, that was something that I've always done. Well, actually not always. It's only ever since I moved to London, really. I used to hate it. Um, but now, um, in terms of a cheat meal, I try not to do cheat meals as such because um, I try to eat balanced and if I want a little treat, I'll have a little treat at some point um, throughout my week. I try not to just like make all the calories happen at once because that's not necessarily the best thing for your body. Um, but that being said, I do love a froyo, I do love some banana bread and I do like some sticky toffee pudding or treacle sponge. So I've got a sweet tooth basically. Just give him whatever and he'll eat it. True, I am like the human trash can, Tom the trash can. I'm basically trash, I'm trash. The next question is from Andy Denay, who says, how did you get the courage to come out where you're afraid people might treat you differently? And yeah, of course, I was terrified about coming out. Coming out is one of the scariest things for anyone to have to go through, and everyone does it so differently. Some people do it younger, some people do it older, some people, you know, I felt I was being asked questions about my sexuality all the time, and it got to a point where I was like, you know what? I just want to address all the rumors and address everything and just, you know, be able to speak from the heart and that's how I did it on YouTube because I was able to say exactly what I wanted to say on my terms without anyone having to um, get involved in it. So for me, that's the thing that I love about YouTube is being able to have a voice and be able to speak about the things that mean most to you um, without anyone else having to interfere or edit it or control or say what you're saying, really. Um, but yeah, of course I was worried that people would treat me different. I felt like people were going to be saying, like, would treat me different at the diving pool, people would treat me differently at home, all those things. But actually what ended up happening is I got closer to all my friends and family because 
they really knew me. They knew me. It wasn't, you know, Tom that they had known growing up. I didn't, there was nothing that changed about me. It was just they knew more about me. And I think it actually brought me a lot closer to my family and friends. Next question is from Barandagnaderi. Uh, I'm sorry I said your name wrong there. But it says, why can't we see Robbie's face anywhere? Um, I mean, there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, but to be honest, the main reason is that, you know, he's our son and we wanted to keep him private and to ourselves. He's obviously a massive part of our lives. And um, for, there's so many family members that are yet to meet him that are from America or from Australia and all those kinds of things. And we'd like everyone to meet him in person before they meet him on social media. So that for me was one of the main reasons. And we, it might be different this time next year. Who knows? It's not something that we're saying is going to last forever. But for right now, we wanted to just keep him to ourselves and his smushy, chubby little cheeks. <laughs> next one is from Rupee 7 who says, one thing that keeps you motivated. Now, one thing that definitely keeps me motivated is an Olympic gold medal. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's, that's the thing that every athlete is working towards and every athlete wants to achieve an Olympic gold medal. I've won Commonwealth, Worlds, Europeans, Nationals, but yet to win an Olympic gold medal. So for me, that is the big motivation. But you know, there's different motivations now. With our son in the world and my husband being so supportive, there's, that they motivate me every day. Seeing Lance work so hard on all of his film stuff and then just coming home and seeing Robbie and being like, I want to be the best papa I can be for him. And yeah, I think there's so many forms of motivation that I find. You can find motivation from anywhere if you look for it. Uh, you just have to really want it. Next question is from Teresa Ellis 5 who says, what is Robbie's favorite food? Now I've been having so much fun cooking things for Robbie actually and being able to explore what he likes and what he doesn't like. And some of the things that he's been eating recently are like, uh, this spinach cod uh, potato and cheese leek thing that he really loves. He loves a chicken apricot curry. Uh, he loves, uh, what else has he been eating? He's been eating this um, chicken sweet corn sweet potato uh, and he's been having uh, Greek yogurt with nut butters. So he's, he eats everything. Uh, he definitely takes after his papa with that because he eats and eats and eats. Um, so yeah, I think it's really nice to actually see him enjoy food and see him play with it. and. There's, you know, every inch of my body is like, oh my god, he's so messy, I need to clean him up, I need to clean him up. But at the end of the day, he has to learn to eat somehow, and I get food around my mouth still, so let alone what he's going to do when he's only seven and a half months. Next question is from Mara M10722, who says, why did you change your synchro partner? And it wasn't so much that I changed my synchro partner, there was just a bit of a mix-up in the whole diving world for British diving. We had um, Dan, my old synchro partner, moved down to the springboard to do synchro with Jack because his synchro partner retired and Dan was the only person that could really fill Chris's shoes. Um, and then Matty was already on 10 meter as a, an individual diver. And we also have the same dives and similar techniques. So we were able to match together. He moved down to London and we were able to, well now we're able to train together every single day, which with Dan, he lived in Leeds and I lived in London and we are only matched nine months before the Olympics. Whereas with Matty now, I've got 18 months where I can actually learn to, you know, work with him, how he works in competition, how he works out of competition, how his technique is and how we can best fit together to be able to maximize our chances at the Olympics. Next question is from Dammit Dud, who says, what is the most annoying thing that Lance always does to you? So there's a couple of things. <laughs> One, Whenever he finishes coffee, he loves just putting the coffee cup in the sink rather than in the dishwasher. It's right next to the sink as well. Right next to the sink. Also, uh, sometimes when we're in bed, he has cold feet and he likes to put them on my legs to try and freeze me. I don't know why he does it, but he finds it absolutely hilarious. But that's just one of my things. I'm like, ooh. But you know, there's not really much that he does to annoy me, to be honest. And question number 10 is from JD Mills 1990, who says, what's the biggest change becoming a parent has had on your life? And I mean, becoming a parent is the biggest life change that you'll ever experience, you know, whether you're a sports person or not. And the amount of time and love and care, and it, it's, it's been one of the most amazing things. It's changed all my perspectives on everything. The things that I used to find, the little things that I used to find really stressful and I used to worry about so much, I no longer fret about. I no longer worry about them. I can just come home from training and I leave diving at, at the pool. 
I come home to a smiley little Robbie and cuddle him and it takes away whether I've had a good session or a bad session. You're immediately grounded when you come home to change poopy nappies. So for me, it's been a complete life changer, eye opener, and I've just, it's been the best seven and a half months of my life. So that was 10 questions on 10 meter. So I hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully I'll answer more questions next time I do a Q&A. &A. But yeah, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment if you have any more questions. But until next time, I'll see you later.